if you have a property in Spain and you're thinking or reflecting on whether to sell the property or not, you'll need to know what the taxes and fees are before you, before you do so. So this is what we're going to explain today, what taxes and fees you need to take into consideration. Okay, so in a nutshell, the main taxes and fees are capital gains tax, pluspalia tax, solicitor's fee, estate agency fee, and a very small fee for an energy efficiency certificate if you haven't done one during the last 10 years. Okay, so let's see how each one of these taxes and fees works and sort of so you can basically see what, what to expect. Okay, so with capital gains tax, capital gains tax is very different depending on whether you are a resident of Spain or a non-resident of Spain. So let's explain first how capital gains tax works for you if you are a resident of Spain. So if you're a resident of Spain, what will happen is that at the moment of the sale, no retention is going to make for the for this capital gains tax, and you're expected to do a return the following year declaring what your capital gains tax should be. Now, remember, if you are a resident and you are over 65 and you're selling your main home, you are allowed to sell the property completely free of capital gains tax. You just have to claim the over 65 uh, exemption. It has to be your main home, a home where you've lived for at least uh, three years. Now, if you are a resident, another, another possible allowance that you may have is if you're under 65 and you sell your main home and you buy the next property within the following two years, uh, you can also, if it's the same price of more, you can actually claim again a full exemption of capital gains tax. You'll need to get your lawyer to get all the wording done correctly, et cetera, but you'll, you'll be able to claim the, the exemption. Now, you're also allowed to roll over the profit into another property within the EU. OK, so it's no longer you can no longer roll over to a property in the UK. You can roll over to another property in the EU. Again, consult your lawyer before you do the transaction on your specific case to make sure that you qualify, that you do things uh, correctly. Now, capital gains tax, if you are sorry. So what is the capital gains tax? If you, you don't have the possibility of rolling over the profit, you're not over 65 and therefore claim, claim, can't claim that exemption. Well, if, if not, what you'll have to do is you sell your property and then the June of the following year, you'll do your income tax uh, declaration in Spain and you will pay capital gains tax of a sliding scale between 19 and 24 percent on the net profit uh, that you received on the sale. Now, what happens if you are a non-resident of Spain? Okay, well, if you're a non-resident of Spain, uh, the way it works in practice, the buyer is going to retain 3%, full, full 3% of the sales price, and they're going to pay that money into the tax office on your behalf. Then the lawyer that's handling the sale for you, within four months of the sale, he will make a declaration of what your real capital gains tax has actually uh, been. And it could be more or less than the amount retained. So then he'll have to either claim money back or pay uh, the difference uh, in, depending on how, how it all uh, works out. And uh, the, the tax rate that you're going to pay is 24% again of the, of the net profit. So that's capital gains tax out of the way. Now let's talk about pluspalia tax. Pluspalia tax, people get very confused about. This is like a local capital gains tax. And with the pluspalia tax, um, a couple of years ago, the system was declared unconstitutional. So some people think, oh, I don't have to pay to pay tax anymore. No, it was brought back but with a new uh, system that allows us to choose between two different methods of calculation. One is based on coefficients and one is based on what they call the real market values. Um, so we're allowed to choose between the two of them and your lawyer will need, will need to make the calculation for you using both different systems. For this, it's going to need a copy of your purchase deed, um, a copy of the sales deed or know what you're going to sell it for and a copy of your rates bill and he will calculate both methods and then he will choose on the title deed which is the one that's most beneficial for you remember it's very normal for the buyer if you're a non-resident to want to retain the amount that's due for plus value tax because otherwise it will be the property that will respond for it so don't be alarmed if the, the, the buyer says look apart from the three percent retention for capital gains tax i want to retain it as long as it's all explained in the title deed there's no problem and it's very uh, usual now the solicitor's fee well this is a touchy subject how do i explain this without upsetting colleagues etc okay so but just as a general idea 
I mean, what I'll say is always request a budget in writing, okay? And if he is correct, if he's budgeted, budgeted in writing uh, previous to the transaction. So, I mean, as a guideline, I'd say around the 1% mark plus VAT, uh, even though many lawyers, including us, have a minimum fee um, um, uh, on, on low value properties. Um, so that would be for solicitor's fee. As far as the state agency fee, uh, state agency fees in Spain are sort of anywhere between uh, 3% and maybe up to as much as 6%, sort of 4 or 5% is what we uh, usually see. Um, in Andalusia, for example, in the Valencia region, also in the Baleares, there are some places like um, in the Cadiz, which have a different system because they normally charge a smaller amount, but they charge both the buyer and seller, and you need to be aware of this. In Cadiz, it's very usual to sort of charge just 3%, but they're not telling you they're charging 3% to the buyer as well. So in fact, it's 6%. But, uh, just be, you know, be aware uh, be aware of this. But the lawyer that's handling the sale for you will be able to go through all these different um, systems. And last is just the very small thing, which is the uh, energy efficiency certificate that you have to have uh, when you sell a property. You also need it for rentals. So some people you know, don't even know they've got one, but they have actually was requested when they were renting out the property by the agent things. I mean, we're talking about a fee of anywhere between 150 to 250 euro. Um, maybe on a very large property it could be 300 euro, but not more than that. I mean, this is really easy. It takes just two or three days to obtain and um, you can just request it via the estate agency that's had in the sale or via the lawyer that's handling the conveyance or just go online and request one just basically as i say it's not rocket science you know you shouldn't expect to pay more than you know say hundreds anywhere between 100 and 300 euro that's the how much these things cost um i hope you found the video useful and um, if you ever need help with conveyancing with buying selling property in spain give us a call thank you for watching